Hi, my name is Karin, and I'm anxious. And it's not just because all of you are looking at me. I actually have a special all of the time kind of anxious, and I've had it most of my life. Um, except for when I was a child, anxiety was not something that was diagnosed. So I was labeled shy or nervous or too sensitive. And um, how I interpreted that to mean was that I was weak and that I just needed to put on my big girl panties and deal with it. And I tried, I really did. But my nervous system is different than others. It's like it's turned up really high. So what are normal interactions or situations for others, for me, can trigger my fight or flight response. <laughs> later. <laughs> so while I was growing up, my mom did her best to help and shield me from simple things that for me were extremely difficult. Until when I was a teenager, we lost my mom to breast cancer. She was only 46 years old. And I was forced to negotiate the world on my own. And so I made myself do many of the things that scared me. But I lived my life very cautiously and carefully. And I did not take risks. And I did not uh, pursue my dreams. So my childhood dream was to be an artist. I inherited my artistic talents from my dad. Um, he was an architect slash repressed artist. And, but when it came time for college, um, the life path of an artist felt mysterious and vaguely threatening. And so I compromised and I received a degree in illustration and graphic design. However, after I left school, my success as an illustrator was minimal. And so I came to doubt my artistic abilities. So fast forward 10 plus years, of my cautious and anxious life. And I was lucky enough to meet a wonderful man, and we got married, and we had the miracle that is my beautiful daughter. But everything changes when you have a baby. I don't know if you knew that, but <laughs> <laughs> it truly does. Including, there's physical changes actually happen to the mother's brain. And that, along with sleep deprivation, which for me lasted about three years, and um, the stress of being a new mom, and an exciting move from Seattle to Woodby Island, all of these things together were finally too much for my sensitive system, and I suffered a nervous breakdown. Now, um, I was checked into the Overlake Hospital, where I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. And I finally received the medication that I needed for my brain, which isn't Nutella, but <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Actually, it's that in conjunction with some other things. Um, so soon I was sent home where I was tried to regain a sense of normalcy. Then my dad died. And so for the next year, I had to try to rebuild myself. Um, my brain worked differently. And at 40 years old, I was both an orphan and a mom. And so I had to learn how to take care of myself so that I could take care of my little girl. And during that process, I discovered something or someone very interesting. Me. <laughs> I discovered that without anxiety, I was finally free to be myself. Before, anxiety had defined who I was and how I interacted with the world. But now, without it, a new me, or really the true me, was revealed. And I realized that I was not weak, and that, in fact, I was not weak before. I was the opposite, I was extremely strong because I was able to function in the world while carrying the crushing weight of an anxiety disorder. 
I also, at this point, was able to reclaim the title and identity of artist that I had known myself to be as a child. So I create mixed media paintings of women, exploring the themes of beauty, um, female power, and the divine feminine. And I've created images of women as long as I can remember without really knowing why I was inspired to do so. But what I know now is that I was sharing how I feel about being a woman and the amazing strength and spirituality that come with living life as a female. And while I was stepping forward and embracing the power and strength of the feminine, it felt like the country as well was entering into this new era for women. One in which women were claiming their unique power and breaking glass ceilings. Then November 8th happened. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and instead of supporting this, um, the rise of feminine energy and power, our country elected for president a man who had repeatedly made misogynistic comments, had been recorded condoning sexual assault. And so instead of the glass ceiling being shattered, it was my heart. So anxiety resurfaced. <laughs> but this time my relationship to it was different. Instead of making me want to retreat and hide, no, I still want to retreat and hide. <laughs> But alongside the retreating and the hiding, I do actually want to do something. I, did, I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what. So the day after the election, I was having drinks with friends. A lot of drinks. There's a lot, there's a lot of drinks. <laughs> and one of them said to me, it is your responsibility to keep making your artwork. And I didn't know how to respond because I don't make political artwork. And for most folks, purchasing art is a luxury. So I couldn't connect the dots between creating a luxury item with something that was needed in this new world. However, around this time, I purchased some artwork for myself. Her. <laughs> <laughs> this poster of Hillary Clinton. Now, for me personally, Hillary represents commitment the quality of commitment. She has dedicated her life to causes that are close to her heart, and she has pursued them regardless of what has been thrown at her. You could say she persisted. Nevertheless, <laughs> one could say that. Um, and I wanted to channel that same quality in myself. And so this purchase of this piece of artwork did not feel like a luxury to me. It felt like a necessity. It was a visual talisman that I needed to channel a quality to use in order to step forward and be an agent for positive change. And so that's when I had the light bulb. Ding, ding. Images have the power to awaken and inspire something within us. We are at a crossroads where the old rules of the patriarchy no longer serve us. I believe the feminine needs to take its rightful place alongside the masculine in order to heal and move forward for the evolution and the salvation of our species and our planet. I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. So my artwork can help facilitate that movement because when we surround ourselves with images of powerful women and the divine feminine. It activates our inner heroine so that she can step forward in the name of peace, in the name of justice, in the name of love. <laughs> but I felt that I needed to do more than my artwork to match the level of outrage that I have been feeling on a daily basis. I don't know about you. Um, so full disclosure, I have never been a particularly political or civic-minded person. I have voted and given occasionally to the World Wildlife Fund, and I sort of thought I was good. <laughs> That's enough. But 
After November 8th, that no longer felt like enough. So, I currently um, volunteer with two other amazing women, um, administ co-administrating a, a face local Facebook group, progressive Facebook group. And we've created a community where um, people can get together for support and activism. It's called Rise Together Would Be. And it is now at 600 people and growing, local. <laughs> I have joined our local chapter of the League of Women Voters. If you have not checked out those folks, you really should. And I'm soon to be a board member. I am volunteering with my local chapter of my political party. And I'm looking for ways that I can help support public education. <laughs> it's not enough, though. It's not enough. So even with all of this, it often feels like my efforts are only a teaspoon against a raging fire. But I have to believe that we each have our own teaspoon and that together we can make a difference. And I saw that in January. N not people with teaspoons. I saw <laughs> that in January when I went to the Women's March in Seattle, that with collective anxiety came collective action. So in closing, I would like to share these words from our former president. Our democracy is threatened whenever we take it for granted. All of us, regardless of party, should be throwing ourselves into the task of rebuilding our democracy. It falls to each of us to be those anxious, jealous guardians of our democracy. Thank you.